What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from the quartering, and Brie Larson has responded to rumors of her recast in a way that only Brie Larson could, and the director of Captain Marvel 2 has already begun to stir the pot with fans and anti-fans of the Captain Marvel 2 franchise. I can't wait. I can't wait for Captain Marvel 2 to come out, although it doesn't appear to be a part of Phase 4, it's easily, and I mean like by a order of magnitude, the most anticipated Marvel movie that I have coming up. I mean, everything else I couldn't care less about. <music> Doctor Strange 2, okay, maybe, but... I'm long past going to see Marvel movies in theaters. I just don't feel the same way that I used to after Endgame and after all the various marketing hijinks that they've been up to. That said, I still love the original comic books, the original fans and licenses, or the original um, uh, fandom, and I support it by putting a lot of different Marvel art on my walls via Displate, which I have an amazing, amazing Christmas offer for you. There's still time to get your Displates before Christmas, and I have a massive discount for you. Check this out. Huge shout out to this video sponsor, Displate. Now I'm reorganizing my set and I brought in a brand new collection of a ton of Cyberpunk 2077 inspired designs, which are all on sale. Wake the f up, Samurai. Exclusively using my link. One to two Displates, you save 30% off. Three or more, you get 37% off. And look at, oh, look at that. Oh my God. There's even the quartering designs. There's five different the quartering designs that you'll see if you follow my link. And there are numerous Cyberpunk 2077 designs, Marvel, outdoor images, sports stuff, whatever you could possibly be into. Displate has something cool to put on your wall in a wide variety of sizes, from this all the way up to basically full wall mosaics when you combine them. And I have a huge, huge thank you for all of you who have supported Displate throughout this year. They make it amazing gift. And if you're stuck inside, like most of us are, they make a great way to spruce up your walls. They mount magnetically, so you don't have to stick any holes in your wall. Plus you can swap them in and swap them out as the season goes, create your own designs and have a ton of fun with it. Make sure you support the channel and support your boring walls or somebody else's by using the link in my pinned comment below and pick up some displates and save huge. Thanks so much for supporting Displate. Their support of this channel is paramount to my ability to keep pumping out content and keep people employed like my editor and my thumbnail person. Now, a week ago, there was a rumor that said Brie Larson was out or due to be recast is as Captain Marvel in the franchise. Now, at the time, I said it and I meant it, that I felt like there was little to no chance of this happening. Just even take out the adversarial relationship that Brie Larson has with some of the fandom. Take that out. Outside of the Incredible Hulk, I'm trying to think of another possible recast that's happened in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And quite honestly, one that's anywhere near recent history. I mean, the Edward Norton Incredible Hulk was like a distant memory. Uh, and I just don't see it. Ultimately, they're going to have to try and bring new people on and to carry on the suit. You know, Iron Man, um, Captain America, these are characters that they need to keep going. But there was an article, and I'm not saying it's wrong. The The rumor, I just I felt like there wasn't a, a, a huge chance of, of Marvel recasting, um, in their opinion, according to what they say, um, the literal face of Marvel uh, in Captain Marvel. And now it would appear that Brie has responded to, I don't know, this rumor in her own little way. Um, and also Nia DaCosta, the director of the film, decided it would be a great time to start poking at fans. Brie Larson responds to Captain Marvel News. It may be December, but last night felt like we were inside Hall H at San Diego Comic-Con as Disney unveiled a slate of film and television projects that quite simply no other studio is capable of. From Disney to Pixar to Star Wars to Marvel, the list goes on and on. And one of the big movies we learned more about was Captain Marvel 2. And while fans are certainly excited, so is Brie Larson and director Nita Costa. 
Now, you might know Nita Costa from a movie nobody's seen, uh, the Candyman remake, and now she's been handed a billion dollar franchise. So we'll have to see how that turns out. To be said, or to be fair, there are plenty of, um, you know, directors that have been around forever that continue to direct terrible movies. So experience doesn't necessarily mean anything, but Marvel and DC continue to bring in these young kind of woke director types like we saw with Birds of Prey that flopped and we'll have to see what happens with Captain Marvel 2. It has been previously reported that Candyman director Nia DaCosta would helm Captain Marvel 2 but the detail would was not confirmed by Marvel until last night. Along with confirmation came news that the MCU's Miss Marvel, uh, Miss Marvel, sorry, Iman Vellani and Tayana Paris who will debut as Monica Rambeau in WandaVision, will also appear in the film. Following the news, Brie Larson shared a text thread with director DaCosta that showed both women are absolutely ready for this, even if the rest of the world isn't. And you can see Brie sharing um, text message. I think this is neon on the right, probably. Let's do this. Can't wait. Let me add Iman and Tiana. OMG, is the world ready? They better get ready. Oh no, she must be on the left. Um, with all the news have been rumored, there's some cases that even reported by reliable sources that this was the first time that Marvel had officially confirmed most of it. Not only did we learn for sure that the new Miss Marvel was who the new Miss Marvel was going to be, we learned that she would be making the leap from Disney Plus to the big screen almost immediately. Flop incoming, I promise you. After leading her own series that will debut in late 2021, she'll co-star in Captain Marvel 2. Oh, okay, sorry, it's not a solo film. I haven't got to all the Marvel news yet, which I'll cover later today. She'll co-star in Captain Marvel 2 about a year later, which is set to hit theaters in 2022. With the addition of uh, Monica Rambeau, brings yet another character from the Disney Plus series. Should be the first one we get to meet, as WandaVision is set to arrive soon. Now, to me, the big question is, will people still remember? Will the hype Will they be able to spin up the hype machine, especially after Hollywood has now basically abandoned movie theaters? So then we have the director. I'm not sure exactly what this is, but Marvel Studios says Brie Larson returns as Carol Danvers in Marvel Studios, Captain Marvel, directed by Nita Costa, joining the cast and recently announced Miss Marvel, blah, 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 to which Nita Costa replies, tag me, you cowards. I don't, I don't know, because to me, it was clearly a joke. But this article says, Captain Marvel 2 director trolls cowards. Captain Marvel 2 director call, uh, trolls and calls out cowards on Twitter from the following casting news. Following the Marvel announcements from Kevin Feige and official confirmation, Nia DaCosta directing Captain Marvel, DaCosta tweeted, Take me, you cowards. No worries, though, as it turns out, DaCosta was simply having fun. Tweeting this and was like, oh, no, people don't know. Like, I don't think um, that was directed necessarily at, at the quote-unquote haters. Captain Marvel or Marvel is also well aware of the Brie Larson Captain Marvel controversy. While DaCosta might be simply have been having fun with the tweets, it does confirm that DaCosta, Marvel, and Kevin Feige are well aware of everything surrounding Brie Larson and Captain Marvel. Otherwise, why tweet what she tweeted? Prior to the Disney Investor Day, with a big rumor hit net offering that Disney isn't at all happy with Brie Larson and might replace Larson following Captain Marvel 2 or that the character might be retired completely, what's particularly interesting is that the rumor offers a woman of color might replace Brie Larson. And as announced the Disney Investor Day presentation, Tiana Paris is starring in Captain Marvel 2 as Monica Rambeau, who in the comics has gone by Captain Marvel actually prior to, prior to Carol Danvers. Again, there's no freaking way Disney removes Brie Larson. Not happening. No chance. All of the Marvel Studio news coming out of the Walt Disney Company's 2020 Investor Day. You had just a massive, you had a WandaVision trailer, you have Falcon and the Winter Soldier, obviously you've got Loki, um, you've got What If, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, a re revealed additional staff, Miss Marvel introduces Iman Vellani, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, as Kamala Khan, the She-Hulk comedy series, uh, which just seems bizarre to me. Why make it a comedy series? But okay. Um, then you've got Marvel Studios to tackle Mark Spector's story, The Moon Knight, and Secret Invasion, 
brings Samuel L. Jackson and Ben Mendelsohn back together. Uh, Riri Williams is headed to Disney Plus in the new Ironheart series. I mean, Jesus. Basically, if you turn on Disney Plus, um, you will have innumerable Star Wars and Marvel programs to watch. There is, and I feel very confident saying this, 0% chance that there is a high degree of quality among all of these programs. But there's a very strong chance some of them will be good, as we've seen with The Mandalorian. Now, a lot of people want to point at The Mandalorian and say, yeah, The Mandalorian's so good, so therefore you got to give him a chance. Well, I don't know. The last five Marvel films I felt were subpar, and the last everything Disney has done with Star Wars other than The Mandalorian has been subpar. It feels like The Mandalorian is more of an exception than the rule, but I understand why people want to hold on to it. You've got an I Am Groot series. Christian Bale has now joined Thor Love and Thunder as Gore, the God Butcher, uh, Paul Rudd, and uh, Evangeline Lilly. And by the way, I was surprised Evangeline Lilly got recast after she had some spicy freedom-type tweets. Also reported, Captain Marvel 2 will reportedly make Brie Larson the highest-paid actress in a superhero film. I don't know if that's reasonable. Um, Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson, probably more popular definitely has put more work in uh but i think marvel really 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 wants uh captain marvel to to be a hit halle berry's catwoman may have been savaged by critics tanked at the box, box office and was almost instantly labeled as one of the worst movies of all time but the actress still walked away with a 14 million dollar paycheck the dc adaptations dismal performance through coupled though coupled with jennifer gardner's electra tanking the following year swore studios off the notion of female driven comic book blockbusters for over a decade well both of those were just bad movies too i don't think i mean electra was extraordinarily niche and and catwoman just sucked um you know 13 years later the double whammy of gal gadot's wonder woman and brie larson's captain marvel you know i forgot wonder woman comes out in like 10 or 12 days so you know, that'll be interesting. But here's what, here's a really surprising number. So, um, Gadot received a base salary of $300,000 for Patty Jenkins' first DCEU effort, but wound up making millions on profit participation and back-end deals. She recently pocketed a $10 million bonus when the sequel was sent to HBO Max. Larson, meanwhile, was paid $5 million up front for her debut as Carol Danvers and would have also walked away with a whole lot more after the movie raced past a billion dollars and also walked away with a lot more. Insiders say, in terms of salary, though, the highest paid actress in the history of the superhero genre is Scarlett Johansson, who scooped up $15 million apiece for Avengers follow-up, Age of Ultron, Infinity War, and Endgame as Black Widow. However, she ended up raking a total of $56 million from Endgame, based on performance-related bonuses after it went on to become the biggest pick in history. And that's crazy. She's just part of an ensemble cast. Now, insider Daniel, Daniel Rickman is now claiming, though, Larson's earnings for Captain Marvel 2 will see her take the title from her Avengers cohort, which means her deal is worth a minimum of $15 million, while she'll likely also have a lucrative set of clauses in her contract that will guarantee even more based on the movie's earnings. I believe that movie has a 0% chance of making more money than the first Captain Marvel movie. But again, it's difficult to predict where movie theaters are going to be in another two years. You know, we've got a new release date for Captain Marvel 2, uh, and it's not entirely set in stone. But Candyman director Nia DaCosta will be taking over directorial duties in the sequel, which is now set to premiere on November 11th, 2022 it's so crazy to be talking about this film two years ahead of time i mean i guess disney plus is bigger than i probably give it credit for but zoics like i'm gonna be almost 40 by the time that comes out i just i don't know if i'm gonna care about marvel anymore hopefully disney plus puts together some compelling programming you know i've got hope for programs like loki some of these new ones it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes out i'm looking forward to your comments in the comment section down below don't forget to leave a like and we'll talk to you again real soon